where do we go? Well, welcome everybody to how to build resiliency in the workplace. It's another Learn Your Benefits webinar. Uh, we've done this presentation a couple of times. It was actually really well received, uh, both in our internal private webinars, which is why we want to bring it to Hay Summit and you all again. And we've done this a few times uh, at local SHRM events and et cetera. So it's been pretty well received. So I'm going to dive right in and we'll get into it. So before we move, let me open with a couple of opening remarks uh, that'll help you kind of see from our perspective why resiliency is important and why employee benefits to improve that resiliency are super important from, again, from our perspective. So why resiliency, why employee benefits, why learn your benefits? We believe employee benefits are so intimately tied to employee well-being that communications must never stop. So Learn Your Benefits is a platform we'll talk about in just a few minutes. So, well, why? Why communications must never stop? Because from our perspective, it's ridiculously important to help our employees thrive and be there during their moments of need because it is through our employees that we'll see the bottom line. The challenge, bottom line increases, sales increases, et cetera. The challenge with human resources, and again, we're in the benefits communication space, is top line sales increases, bottom line profit increases driven through us don't necessarily go to our cost centers or don't necessarily improve us. It improves everyone else's retention and improves everyone else's sales and improve everyone else's profitability. So it's tough to draw that correlation between benefits and the overall bottom line, but let's all do our best. Let's focus on helping our employees thrive and be there during their moments of need because the modern family needs it. I include this picture here, which is obviously, um, you know, 20th century television, Fox, modern family story, uh, modern family. It's hilarious because we're communicating to these employees and their families through diverse needs and through diverse family structures. And so we must offer benefits like resiliency benefits and resiliency training that communicate to all these various groups behind our employees because employees are 70% more likely to be satisfied with their job if they're leveraging and utilizing your benefits. Employees are 51% more likely to stay if they're leveraging your benefits. Think of, if, think of this as like amazon.com, the more they can get you to buy, the more likely you are to continue to return. The inverse is true or it's similar to be that way with benefits. The more you can get them leveraging and using your benefits on a recurring basis from HSAs to mental health benefits, the more likely they are to stay and value your benefits. Sort of a no-brainer, well, duh, that makes sense. But it's really important to be thinking of this as promotions and sales of benefits just as much as it is to help them be uh, successful and help them thrive. And employees are 53% more likely to be productive when they're leveraging your benefits, when they are healthy. And so again, it is through benefits that we're going to help them thrive. It's through proper communications we're going to help them be, uh, we're going to be there during their moments of need, and it's through communications that we're going to promote uh, these resiliency benefits that we're going to talk about here in just a minute. So over the next 50 or so minutes, we're going to go through these learning objectives here, which is why resiliency should be a priority. So we'll take a statistical look at why resiliency is key, and our approach to facilitating resiliency. So what benefits and proper promotions and communications of these benefits is critical. And then some Q&A if there's some time, I'll take a look at the chat and we'll go through it. Uh, right before this though, let's go into introductions on, on who's the talking head here at the top right hand corner of the screen or wherever you have the vision. I'm the man on the left, obviously. I'm one of the co-founders here at Learn Your Benefits. I've been in the technology and software as a service space and strategy and executive roles for about the last 15 years and then Corollary with that, if you think of a Venn diagram overlapping with that, it's 15 years in HR and benefits for organizations from a million to a billion on the employer side. My co-founder here at Learn Your Benefits, not on this call, but certainly available if you have questions, has got 20 years in technology and mobile, and particularly on the communication side. So he ran a communications agency for, for 20 years, and it was the core idea between him and I to come up with Learn Your Benefits which is a benefits communications platform. So it's really communications and navigation. So let's get people to, um, my navigations, I mean, let's get them to the benefits, let's get them to their answers, 
Let's get them to the website, the mobile app. Let's get them to all that information as quickly as possible. And communications is really about the promotions of this. It's making it easy. Think of learning benefits as MailChimp meets YouTube meets Twitter uh, and Wikipedia for communications. So helping you promote the benefits as easily and as elegantly and as effectively as possible and try to focus on being as plug and play. So we're really the first true software as a service platform. So there's not significant upstart time, build out costs there. Um, so we wanna be as ultra affordable as possible for any size organization. So with that, now that you know who the, the person in the camera is and, and why Learn Your Benefits cares for this, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my camera so we can focus on the actual presentation here and dive right into the actual content here. So why resiliency should be an a priority for you and your organization. So with that though, let's let's define resiliency. Um, there's different perspectives of it. What we are landing on as a definition here when we help our employers communicate these benefits, it's the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. This is both on a micro level at the individual employees level, arming them with the benefits and the mental capabilities to overcome difficulties, but also the global level. At the corporate level, what are we doing to train our groups and our teams on resiliency training in the case of turnover, on the case, in the case of difficulties, in the case of poor financial performance? What are we trying to do to sort of bear down and move on to the next step of our lives here? So um, that's what we mean by resiliency. It's the capacity to quickly recover from difficulty. And we're going to kind of jump back and forth between those two ideas. And that, um, again, by jumping back and forth between those ideas, maybe it'll be high level at the corporate level down to the individual level, promoting resiliency. Why is resiliency ridiculously important these days? Um, we've talked about it about the last two years is when it really started bubbling up with COVID. It is still incredibly important right now. Pew Research Center here on the right. What are the things and the concerns employees have from even cutting health costs that is causing fear, uncertainty, and doubt? Things that are really important to employees that should be a top priority for Congress. Again, Pew Research study January 10th to the 17th of, of this year. Their number one priority is strengthening the economy. Well, what's interesting is what's not on there, what I'm going to talk about in just a second that's bubbled up in the last two or three months, is causing massive fear and uncertainty and doubt for everyone, um, which will be inflation. Reducing health care costs needs to be a priority for the president and Congress this year. The political system, reducing crime, the budget deficit, the criminal justice system, the military, dealing with drug and, and other addictions. Those are all priorities for many, many groups here. These are all things causing fear, uncertainty, and doubt that overlap with employees, particularly that employees are, again, working from home, F or WFH here on the top. These are more things causing fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Work from home. So I don't know about you, but every conversation I have with most employers talks about the schedules are going to be moving to from work from home and employees have it hanging over their head that is this permanent or is this temporary they want to know in the long term what i can understand and what i can commit to where can i live where should i be because commute costs are hanging over their head like we're going to talk about in just a second with uh inflation is if i got to go back to the office and pay four or five six dollar seven dollar gas depending on where you are in the states here that's incredibly uh, expensive. So let's be mindful of this. Let's let's help them put this at ease. Let's give them the resources to make sure there is no fear, uncertainty, and doubt for a lot of these things here. Active assailant. Um, I don't, you know, there there's you know knives and and weapons and guns and everything like that. Let's just leave it the term active assailant. That's a concern people have depending on where they work, retail or crowded environments or uh, certain office environments or warehouse environments. Uh, many people have new jobs now and new supervisors due to turnover. That's fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Um, sickness, which correlates to PTO availability. What 
do people have available for them for PTO and sickness in the event of COVID or other illnesses now that are, are popping up and behaving differently as a result of the fact that we haven't been exposed to many um, viruses in the last two years, let alone politics and safety, which also go to active assailant, to um, rampant racism, to you know even the fears that are related to that. So from everyone's perspective, there's fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So incredibly important that we address these with resiliency benefits. And then the top thing on most conversations here is sticker shock. You know, the price of gasoline thankfully seems to have come down here. We're in the Minneapolis area and Fairfax, Virginia area. Uh, gas prices have thankfully come down here a little bit. We're at the about the $4, $4.30 level, give or take. Let me know in the chat, you know, what you're at. Um, food as well, rising. I just remarked with my, my partner the other day, your wife, the cost of chicken. I mean, just chicken wings and things like that is crazy. Shelter costs and things like that. I, these are all driving costs. It's all causing fear, uncertainty, and doubt. It's all making people concerned on the next paycheck, on the next month of what's going to happen. So let's provide them with tools and capabilities to help them address these. So commuter benefits and pre-tax accounts for commuter and public transportation and benefits on bike and ride share and, and things like that, or even gasoline programs, gasoline cards. I mean, there's lots of ways to do individual small benefits that address this sticker shock to help people overcome their concerns, to help prevent, uh, you know, burnout and things like that. So speaking of burnout, so all of those things we just talked about that behind fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and why resiliency is so important is these statistics here. 60% of employees are less likely to experience burnout through proper resiliency and self-care. So if we can provide them with the benefits, the mental fortitude to overcome these, and we provide them with the tools so they know how to use those benefits, they are less likely to experience burnout. 24% decrease in stress after resiliency coaching. Uh, that might be individual level, that might be at the team level or even at division level, is how are you able to overcome challenges such as turnover and supply chain difficulties and those and, and similar things you have to be able to help them decrease the stress. Employees are 31% more engaged after self-care. So work from home has been a great opportunity for people to introduce more self-care into their lives. So, oh, I just worked for an hour. I'm gonna take a five minute walk and go to the mailbox or I'm gonna uh, talk to the neighbor. I'm gonna do a little bit of lifting, um, you know, in, in my, my, you know, on my exercise equipment, just something for self-care. Now, if we move back into the office, you're taking away some of those opportunities that people have learned for self-care. Uh, so it's, it's, let's think about those things. What are we going to do in the office to facilitate self-care, allow people to walk away from their desk or block out their calendar for meetings? And then if we give them resiliency, we're at the fourth point there, 50% experience stress-related productivity loss. So if we can pull away stress-related issues, we can increase productivity, which is kind of a well duh, um, we've talked about it, um, we've all experienced it. And employees are two times more likely to leave if they're under stress in your organization. So all of this is fantastic. We just talked about um, you know, why it's important to facilitate resiliency, offer benefits that, are, that encourage resiliency at the individual and the corporate level, and then why self-care the statistical reasons for why it's really important and what's out there in terms of, um, in terms of uh, you know, what's causing fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So now let's talk about how we can facilitate resiliency. So let's break this down and, and how hopefully this presentation will, will help you here. Benefit and policy changes. And then let's talk about how we can help employees thrive with your benefits. So it's one thing to roll these out and create new benefits and leverage free and costly services that are out there. It's another thing to make sure they're in the hands of the employees and that's our expertise. And that's what we wanna help you with here at Learn Your Benefits. So let's start with 
point number one there, benefit and policy changes. So benefit changes, and then we'll move to policy changes during this and after um, another slide here. Mindfulness, coaching, and similar. So we've seen EAPs with mental health benefits. Our employees are, um, at least in my experience, and again, organizations from a million to a billion, is they're not overall well utilized. Um, I chalk that down to fear of psychology in, in, in the cases of my larger organizations that were manufacturers. Um, so you've got a different clientele who aren't as open to sharing and caring and, and expressing those concerns, although that's changing here too. So, uh, But mindfulness coaching and even those types of things are, are seeing a lot of traction lately. Um, so if you're worried about resiliency or, or you're thinking about benefits, look for mindfulness coaching. Um, helping people, you see it particularly in health anxiety and social anxiety, then mindfulness coaching is really valuable to overcome those big anxiety and creating things. This next point here is in terms of benefits and policy changes is encouraging detachment breaks. That goes back to that point I was making earlier about 31% of employees are more engaged after self-care is if people are back in the office, they're experiencing this rampant fear and uncertainty in general, which really always does exist, but it seems to be more prominent these days. In your office, what are you doing to encourage detachment breaks? Not talking forced fun, um, you know, like picnics and things like that. Um, maybe that's you're sensing my, my lack of interest in forced fun, but it's more about what does an individual person need for detachment? And what can they do at their desk, in the office, outside the office, walking away to encourage self-care, to, to, to give them 10, 15 minutes to do it, force them to take that time? Can they block off their calendar? Can, they, can everyone have 15 minutes on their calendar that's marked as red, which is do not disturb, which is their chosen detachment time? Something just as simple as that to help them focus on themselves and their families during that time and not have to worry about other issues or overcome their issue or give them time during the office hours to call an EAP and, and ask a question for legal or, or mental health issues. The next one is coaching and compassion training. Um, lots of programs are out there. Uh, you know, I'll actually talk about a couple in just a second uh, that I've seen that are kind of interesting, cool, approachable or costly services we'll talk about. Uh, and then resilient teams. The last one is benefits and policy changes are what are we doing from an organizational development perspective to drive resilient teams? Checklists on makeup of the team, checklists on how to overcome changes in direction, training in, over, in order to communicate changes, you know, and waterfall them throughout the organization in the event of a dramatic change that might cause stress and debriefing. You know, once a meeting is done, what are we doing to Again, waterfall those communications. What are we doing to ensure follow through? What are we doing to actually address uh, the anxiety caused through changes uh, and more? Um, had a lot of conversations lately in Minneapolis area. We're in the retail space, big time. We've got Target in our backyard and Best Buy in our backyard, both who have reported changes in their earnings just due to people cutting back on spending. So those have caused some pretty dramatic changes in staffing and restructuring and cost savings and open position eliminations and things like that. So resilient teams can actually positively impact those things, create less stress on employees and more. So let's talk about some benefits that are out there that we've seen. So let me just reintroduce Learn Your Benefits again. So we're a communications platform. We help people, employers, and brokers and partners promote their benefits with our tools and our videos. Um, we've got real-time video capabilities, we've got campaigns, we've got analytics you can use to post, to, to improve your communications, improve your benefits and more. So we get to, we, we, I guess we have the privilege of seeing what many organizations are doing and what they're adding in their benefits. And, what videos we might create to help them promote those or how they're going to leverage our existing videos to promote these uh, and more. Again, think of this as sort of MailChimp meets YouTube meets Google for employee benefits. 
Um, one cool thing that I'm seeing bubble up more and more are free resources. We saw this a ton in April, May, June of 2020 is what CDC and what free resources are out there um, for COVID. You know, everything from masking to social distancing to policies to whatever. They were, many employers were filling their sites with free resources from the CDC on hand washing, et cetera, for learning benefits, or they're filling their learning benefits communications and promotional sites with free resources. So uh, we've stumbled across seeing this, workplacementalhealth.org, which is the American Psychiatric Association Foundation. They're in their Center for Workplace Mental Health. They've got a number of resources. Some are paid, some are free, um, some require a donation. And these are all mental health benefits and employer tools and resources needed that can help employers support the mental health of their employees and their families. So in here will be flyers and PDFs and videos. Do me a favor though, if you access this information, put them someplace centrally located. That's the power of Learn Your Benefits. I'll talk to you about a second. Let's not send people to 35 different sites where you have your homepage, your internet site, your external site, your Ben Admin system or whatever. Let's take these resources and put them in one central location uh, for employees to access them. So workplacementalhealth.org. I just grabbed the Our Mission because I think it's an interesting site. Uh, one more thing, too, uh, we can share these slides with you after the presentation. I'll, I can um, make sure we connect with everyone and get these things into your hands. So the next one is SHRM. Uh, we all know SHRM. Uh, we're, we're, we're regular marketing partners through SHRM here in the States. Um, employers embrace resiliency training through rewards and strategies. Lots of great articles on SHRM. Uh, lots of great links and products and vendors. I love their vendor marketplace. You get to see some of the coolest benefits that are out there just because Sherman is such a great central location. Also, shout out to Employee Benefits News, shout out to HR executives, shout out to World at Work here uh, in the States. Fantastic organizations with lots of resources to go to for uh, resiliency and just little changes you can make to uh, your benefits or offerings is, is, really, is really powerful here. We're also seeing a lot with Axiom Medical Unum, Cigna, things like that around mental health and, um, you know, in-home mental health, in-home psychiatric care, in-home psychology sessions, all those types of things are obviously out there if you have the budget and the interest uh, within your organization. So now let's, we, we just talked a little bit about benefits that employers can offer. We talked about policy changes you can do. I want to now pivot to go, okay, well, now that we've offered these benefits, now that we've added them, how can we actually get them into the hands of employees? How can we help our employees thrive through our benefits? And so before I do that, let me introduce some of the financial costs of poor communications. First one, AFLEC. 71% of employees that admit they rarely, sometimes, or never understand their benefits. That to me is, is a, a pretty big stat. It's the first one I bring up here because it's my mission at Learn Your Benefits to help change this, is to make everyone aware of the benefits as much as possible. And so if we're gonna spend all the time and money to roll out resiliency benefits and things like that, well, we need to make sure they understand them and they use them. Employees are two times more likely to leave their job if employers communicate poorly or infrequently. Think about this in terms of resiliency and, and fear in employees. If they are looking for a job, they're unhappy, they've got that massive anxiety hanging over their shoulders. Let's relieve that. Let's make them stay. Let's make them happy to be here as much as we humanly can. Because if the cost that they want to leave is 4,300 bucks. So from Benefit Pro, the average cost to replace an employee is $4,300. Um, I, I know that number's low in, in some instances here uh, in the cities in some roles. So we have to make these benefits approachable, easy to access, easy to understand, in their hands, whether they're in the office or out of the office, make it super easy for people to get it. So now let's understand our audience. If our goal is to help employees thrive and our goal is to get these resiliency benefits into people's hands, let's understand our audience. Our employees don't like to read. 
according to an MIT study, which I actually have in another presentation, so check our channel here on Hey Summit and elsewhere for other presentations we'll have. And I'll, we spent a little time talking about this MIT study uh, in what HR can learn from marketers, et cetera, that you will only get someone's attention when they're ready. If you notice advertisements, they don't get into individual details on cars or individual details on watches or consumer products because people will only do comparative analysis of products when they're actually ready to shop. What employers do in many cases within communications is they lead with comparative charge and summaries and benefits and the cost of things. They don't necessarily lead with awareness of a particular product or awareness of benefit. And then when people wanna learn about the benefit, they make it really difficult to understand and really difficult to find answers. And we're gonna talk about that in just a second. So when employees are ready to give you attention for a particular benefit, we need to be ready that to answer their questions, provide comparative studies. Otherwise, in the meantime, let's focus on awareness and let's focus on findability of answers which is the third point here, employee sentiment on communication. So you rolled out a new uh, mental health benefit. Employees need on-demand answers and findability. This gets to that comment earlier about, let's not have everything on 30 different sites, let's have it on one. And so let's make sure it's searchable and findable. So when you're ready to use it, um, let's make sure we're, we're making it easy. The statistics on drop-off, if employees don't get an answer, is pretty astounding. So 180 seconds, that's the amount of time employees will give you to find an answer on your site, on your benefits communications within your guides or whatever. Otherwise, they're gonna to go to the closest form body. They're gonna to go to Melvin or Carl or somebody you don't want them to go to to get an answer. So it's really, really important. We provide, or the employers provide communications and answers and findability of answers and phone numbers and mobile apps as quickly as possible. Employees don't like to cram. So think open enrollment to here in the States is very much a, a, a concern. They don't want forced attendance. Employees want year round awareness and then findability of answers. And when it's time to enroll and time to make changes, they'll give you their time and attention when they're ready to do it, or they'll just do same as last year's Sally, but they don't like to cram because they don't know they're not, a, they're, they're just not, we're not learning this way anymore. They're more about, I'll give you my attention when I want it. So let me have answers and findability. In the meantime, remind me what I have on occasion. So we need to be communicating more frequently during the year. So just remember that at point number four here and point number five, employees want frequency in, of communications. So knowing what employee sentiment is, they don't like to read. You will only get attention when they want to give it to you. They want on-demand answers and they want year-round awareness and they don't like forced attendance and they don't want frequency. So let's think about this. What are employees, employers doing, excuse me, for communications? They're doing Sears robot catalogs. So the paper, they don't like to read. Um, they don't necessarily, paper doesn't necessarily deliver on findability of answers because most people will throw it out. And this is infrequent driving one single catalog a year or every so often by the way this is aka your benefit guide is the sears robot catalog that's not frequent that doesn't drive awareness this is forcing people to shop when they don't want to shop they want to have awareness of what's out there and additionally then your benefits webinars and in-person meetings and scheduled events is like people gathering around the radio in the 20s and the 30s Okay, time, it's time for our annual open enrollment meeting. Everyone has to show up from this time to this time. No, they will only give your attention when they want it. You're just going in one ear right out the other when it comes to costs and rates. So your communications need to be like this. They need to be findable and purchasable as quickly as Amazon, searchable as Google, as entertaining as Netflix, and then as diverse as YouTube's video listing is. So combining those capabilities into your communications is really, really important. Continuing on then, let's, let's talk about our approach. This isn't a sales approach. This is more about helping you understand our perspective because you can apply this in your own environments, in your own communications. So 
for those of you who may have spent some time in marketing or may have spent time in other organizations, there's the idea of the customer journey. This is our approach. This is the, the baseline education behind our approach, which we call the benefits journey. But let's stay on the customer journey for just a second. Again, think of this as how we are gonna promote our benefits from a marketing perspective using the customer journey. So you rolled out the coolest resiliency benefits, you're ready to do it. How are we gonna promote those to employees during the year? And so let's just talk about the customer journey again as borrowed from marketing. So awareness is the first step in the customer journey. Awareness is where the person, let's just, let's talk about toaster shopping here, just to keep it fun and irreverent. Awareness is, I know Target, Walmart, Amazon sells toasters. Awareness is also that I'm aware that I have a need now. My toaster just broke, started my kitchen on fire. This is not true, I'm being irreverent here, but my toaster broke, I need a new one. Oh, wait, that's right, Target.com has one or something. So. I'm aware now that this benefit exists. You as an employer and somebody promoting benefits, if you're here, is you should be thinking about what you're doing to drive awareness. Are you doing campaigns, postcards, newsletters? Is it regular? Is it automated? Is it, is it easy? Just that's the awareness for you. Findability then is now we're gonna go to Google. We're gonna type in toaster and it's gonna spit out recommended vendors or recommended companies to sell you that toaster. How findable are your answers? We're gonna talk about that in just a second. How findable are your benefits for questions? Consideration now, this is where we turn to charts. I said earlier in that MIT study that you will only get attention when people are ready. No one's gonna give a garbage about mid-cycle cancel, four toasters, you know, four slice toasters or two slice toasters. They're not gonna care about that stuff until they're ready to give you the time and attention it takes to make a decision. So now consideration is the phase in that customer journey where they're going to, they want to compare and contrast features and, and capabilities of a toaster. And then conversion, we have to make it easy to buy and buy now. So add to cart, as you know, these are Amazon's colors right here. Buy now and add to cart, take it off the shelf. Our open enrollment structure is a necessary evil. It's unfortunate that we have to force people to buy at a certain period of time for many, many of our benefits. Uh, there are some clue, some cool payers and insurance programs that are out there that do away with open enrollment to a degree, but there's still the annual re-up and there's still the life, you know, life event changes that we still need to make changes on. But again, imagine if Amazon.com made it really hard for you to buy a toaster on their website, they wouldn't sell a single toaster. That's employers in many cases for at, at this conversion. We don't know employees, employers don't promote websites or the URLs to download apps, or they don't make it easy to remember or access the HSA or FSA. They don't make it easy to understand what URLs do I go to to manage my HSA account investments. Uh, it, it, that's conversion. That's giving people access to their benefits as quickly as humanly possible. And then nurturing. What are we doing to follow up with people on these benefits. So that's great. If you've chosen mental health benefits, it's one thing to drive awareness with a campaign. Well, your campaigns that you're using later on the following year for those same benefits, those continue to nurture people and remind them that that benefit is there and for them to take advantage of it. So it's really important to keep this entire customer journey in mind and your benefits. And I'm gonna layer it on one level deeper here in just a second when I make a couple of points. So again, People can buy a toaster in less than 180 seconds, and that's the way people are programmed to go. I want to get that thing and move on with my life. I don't want to spend the time. Many of your benefits should and can be consumed and learned of, purchased, and subscribed to in as little as 180 seconds. But in many cases, we make it way too difficult for people to get that bad. And all of this was on demand. Employees aren't going to give any attention until they're ready to do it for many of our benefits, albeit many of them they can't, obviously, to open enrollment uh, focus. But to a large degree, this whole process is on demand when they want it. Um, this gets back to self-care. If something is bothering them that their toaster is broken, 
let's enable them to make this purchase and get it out of their lives, get it out of their concerns as quickly as possible so that this toaster is on their doorstep when they get home from work. Uh, let's think about that for our benefits because now let's talk about the benefits journey in many organizations and let's give a fun little example in this case. So pet insurance, somebody got a new dog, Sparky, uh, here and now this is the awareness, oh man, I should probably get some pet insurance for this. But people start thinking, okay, well, do I, does my employer even offer pet insurance? I have no idea. I threw away the benefits guide, so I'm just gonna email my, my HR team and they're gonna email those and that person now needs to feel that question because that employer in, in many in the many cases that employer isn't doing campaigns or promotions or their benefits and so how do employees in those cases even know what's available employees already forgot open enrollment because there's no year-round communications so there's already a gap in many employers at the awareness level of what's out there findability then well where do i even find that answer for pet insurance is it a bad admin system is there an intranet site what if i'm not in the office and I, I don't want to log in. What if my spouse or partner wants to look into pet insurance for me? Is there an external site? Is it searchable? The benefits guide is in the trash, I guarantee it. And are you sending people to 10 different sites? If you're doing any of the above or all of the above, you're not facilitating findability, which is facilitated with a single site that's searchable, that's just as easy as Amazon. That's where they're ruling the world here. And that's where we're all gonna become Wally in the next 30 years or the people that are in quality, if you will, in the next 30 years, is because they're making it super easy for us to find anything. Now, I believe most of the garbage on Amazon.com is cheap Chinese crap, but at the same time, it's findable and easy to get at. Then consideration. This is where the charts and, and facility, those data come in. You will finally get attention on those, but it's really critical that it's infographics, that it's entertaining. At the consideration, this is where we get videos from our vendors. Let's get pet insurance videos from our from the you know the organization you're using, MetLife or whomever. Um, this is where we're going to put these videos and handouts in a single destination, which is the findability. Let's as they want to peel back the onion to learn more. Let's give them the information that they need, and then when it's time for them to buy or subscribe or download or use, let's make it ridiculously easy for them to find the phone number, find the website, and find the form. Just do this one change for me. If you have a flyer from MetLife or Aflac or whomever you're using for voluntary benefits like pet insurance, on that flyer is a website, on that flyer is a domain, on that flyer is more information. Take that website out and put it someplace on a landing page for your benefits education so people go right to that link, not open the form and then find the link because many people are on their mobile devices and that's a pain in the butt to have to do. And then nurturing talks about, let's make sure we're sending out promotions year round. So in many organizations, this, this probably sounds fairly familiar, whether you got 25 employees or 25,000 employees, there's nothing on demand about this. So remember how simple it was for somebody to buy a toaster? Aren't some of your benefits supposed to be just that easy to subscribe to? And we make it very regularly difficult for employees to get access to those things. So resiliency is about lowering anxiety let's make it easy for people to get to these benefits and get to these answers and in most cases there's enormous gaps in employers so this is the first gap i'm going to talk about new and unique benefits require more consideration time and as you know benefit options are expanding that left side here they're condition specific diabetes and ergonomics and in-home benefits, uh, you know, stipends for cell phones and, and uh, desk, standing desks and organizations doing lots of stuff that's very specific to an employee's need. Benefits are getting more and more customizable. They're very time bound or seasonal. If you live, well, I'm in the Midwest here, we're not doing a lot of walking programs and Fitbit issues or uh, things like that in, in January, no one's going to, or February, March, no one's taking advantage of them. So they're very seasonal and time bound. And so it's really important that as we add benefits, um, that we give employees more consideration time for those benefits. On the right here, it's a fortune study, benefits employers have added or wish to expand this year. So this is February 2022 when we created this presentation. Improved dental and vision. Here's health and wellness stipend. 13% is number one. 
if that isn't a precursor to the need for resiliency benefits, I don't know what is. Permanent remote work option that's hanging over a lot of people's head, particularly with uh, inflation and the cost of fuel, the cost of cars. Um, fertility benefits. I was just at SHRM, I was at HR Executive and lots of these groups. There's some pretty cool benefits coming out there um, for fertility benefits and caregiver days and child care system. I mean, all these benefits many of them can be utilized and decided to be utilized during the year so we need to do we need to be thinking about the marketing journey or the benefits journey to promote these things throughout the year driving awareness and let's try, let's think about findability how findable is my answer uh let's think about consideration what materials videos handouts do i have that help people understand the benefit very likely it's it's not much and it might not be very clear to read uh, additionally, then conversion, let's make it easy for them to buy, if you will, um, and more. So as you're adding benefits, make sure you're providing materials that help them consider the benefit. I love videos. We're video focused here at Learn Your Benefits, but infographics are great too. And then make sure you got multiple levels of materials. Make sure you have things that are infographics, things that are text based, and things that are long winded because people have different learning needs. The next biggest gap in many organizations is the findability. Uh, we have the Sears Robot catalog here. How findable is that in April when it's in the trash and it's on a website, we don't even know where it is. Then we put much of our benefits information behind firewalls, the ADP and online and the logins. How does that even help spouses and families get answers to that? So it's, it's pretty scary out there how, how complicated we have made it it's tied to compensation, so I get people's concerns, but at Learning Benefits, one of our primary focuses is to encourage open sites. Maybe not all the information is out there. We're certainly open to compromising. We're certainly open to doing whatever the employer wants to do, but it's super critical that we encourage findability of answers anywhere you are on a mobile device and that the websites, costs, downloads, restrictions, limits, FAQs, are all immediately findable, unlike many organizations that they do it today. So with that, let's revisit the employee benefits communications journey and talk about some of the tools and things you could be using um, to facilitate these individual steps. So awareness. So what are the benefits that you have? Obviously, campaigns and emails and texting are just really, really critical. Even a virtual benefits fair experience year round is really valuable. Um, bringing in vendors, not just during open enrollment, but having that type of experience is there. It's awesome for new hires and onboarding. You know, turnover is now approaching, what, 10, 20%, 25% on a lot of organizations. Leaving that virtual benefits fair experience up year round is very expensive in many orders. It's not for learning your benefits, by the way, just cheap luck, but we have a virtual benefits fair experience that you can leave up year round. Uh, that's included for free. Other visual experiences like posters and handles, those are really dying, the print side of it, but infographics, JPEGs, content recommendation features, um, things like that, helping people become aware of it. Like think pop-up ads on YouTube, if you will, or on a website, that's a visual experience, if you will. Overview videos, just give a quick hit of what's available. Findability. Um, how searchable are your answers? Do you have text for FAQs? Are all your resources in one location or 10? Do you have all the vendor resources in there? I Very rarely do employers have all the available resources from it because we are beholden to the intermediaries. The, you know, the marketing team and the product teams at a, at a insurance company create the documents, links, videos, then you go through a sales team and then you go through a broker maybe and then it goes to the employer and then the employer doesn't have a place to put it. There are so many people between the people uploading these resources and the people that are creating them in the vendor or the payer or the insurance company that we very rarely have all of them in a single location. So, you know, build a list. We would call that a content audit, uh, if you will. What, what can we get our hands on from each one of our vendors? Let's get them. Let's put them in a single location. Then consideration, let's make sure they're all available. They're structured in such a way that they're basic, moderate, complex. 
to help people peel back the onion when they're ready. And then conversions, let's make sure links are there. I talked about pulling the links out of the flyers, buttons, calls to action, um, all of that. This is really the benefits communications journey borrowed from the marketing communications journey or the sales journey. And then analytics, What's, what data do you have to do it? Obviously, Learning Benefits has analytics, so we wanted to put it in there, but there's Google Analytics if you have an internet site. Let's, what does your Ben Admin say for people even accessing this? What is your, <laughs> the thing I always get a kick out of is, is the decision support tools are awesome, but how many people are even using it? Um, I just recently had a client uh, who has 2,300 employees, 124 of them went through uh, a decision support tool I won't name. And it was about $65,000 a year for that. Um, you're way past the point of diminishing return on that stuff. And the analytics is really critical to have out there. Whereas something like memory benefits, we get 400% utilization pretty on average. So if you've got a thousand employees, you'll very regularly get 4,000 sessions on memory benefits that covers all of these. So now let's benchmark, um, by the way, this is analytics. And then let's try to break down communications between open enrollment and, and year round. Uh, I'm fully aware that on this call, there's an employers that are under 300 and employers potentially above 10,000 lives. It is really, really critical to understand what your budget is, which most of you very much do, and that you don't have envy, but also be aware that some of these things can be done. So on the left, you see what um, common benefits communications tools are out there from paper guides to posted meetings to one-on-one -on -one meetings, videos prepared by brokers, video prepared internally, Ben Admin systems, HRI system, emails, text, multi-channel promotions, which would be print and things like that. What I really love to see, and by the way, what this is, this is surveys we do across our employers. So every time we have a demo or a presentation with a client or a potential client, we like to document what are the tools they're presently using. And so what I really love then is to see where this average is and where the change happens. Three to 600 employees really are 600 to 1,000. There's a pretty dramatic change in how employers communicate their benefits. You see they start using videos, they start using Ben Admin HRS systems and paper promotions and file sharing and, and all of that stuff. And so let me tell you why the heck we're here and why Learning Benefits, and I'm just gonna spend a minute or two on it, is we're trying to bring everything you see in the circle to every size organization. It's time for every organization, after all, was 58% of employees work for small employers. It's time to bring Fortune 500 level communications to any size organization. And that's my mission. That's Learn Your Benefits mission. It's to help employees thrive and be there during their moments of need in any size company because it shouldn't just be monster organizations. So what is Learn Your Benefits here? Just give me a minute. It's not an HRS or an admin system. We're from year round to open enrollment communications. It's a video focused platform and our goal is to help accelerate knowledge for happier, healthy employees. Our core capabilities for you, the employer or a broker, is we're a plug and play educational or promotional technology for you. Just turn us on. We're the fraction of the cost of existing competitors out there because of our software as a service approach versus we, we don't need a big giant staff pool to build this stuff for you. It's software as a service. It's do it yourself focused. And then we have videos and findability for answers for your employees. Let's Let's make it stupid easy for people to get to answers. So helping employees thrive, where the YouTube meets Wikipedia meets Google from your employee's perspective. They experience desktop and mobile experiences like you see here on the screen. We can peel back the onion with layers of information and videos to provide that consideration. We have dozens of video options we'll talk about in a second. All your resources in a single easy to use platform in multiple languages, completely searchable, like you see here, we're searching for Spanish. Then we have a video playlist. Everything is controlled by you. You prioritize what videos are, what the sequence is, what's shared, what's not shareable, and more. Put any benefit. We have no storage limits, no streaming limits, no nothing. You can put every benefit in a single location to facilitate the need for findability. Because again, 
What if Amazon had a website for cars and an Amazon for shoes and an Amazon for well, nah, it's all in one spot. Let's just think about that and make sure we're doing it. Everything we do is shareable. So you can open these sites up to employees and their families with the share function. And we have campaign functionality. We can communicate year round. This is the virtual benefits fair experience I talked about. We can leave up year round. You can bring in your vendors to help. You can bring in all the resources. This can stay up for new hire onboarding and more. And there's a cool little video interface where you can introduce your benefits and, and, and so much more. And so everything we do is mobile optimized, which then brings the video experience to it. So if you've got a mobile device here, let's talk about the video experiences. So we do tons of custom videos every single year uh, from what's an HSA to comparing traditional plans to tour videos to teaching about time benefits and PTO and anything. Meanwhile, we have no storage limits, no streaming limits. You can upload your own videos. So at that consideration phase of the customer journey, this is great for you to put your videos in here, talk about your benefits, or do it during the virtual benefits fair. Here, everyone here, the changes to our benefits, here's the three new benefits we're rolling out this year, here's their cost. Just upload your videos, it doesn't need to be complicated. Think about the time savings of this now versus doing open enrollment meetings, you just record it once, and then now they're live for the rest of the year and made available to you. We have lots of stock videos. Every one of Learn Your Benefit Sites comes with an inventory of stock videos in English and Spanish. This one's here showing benefit terms. It's great because most people don't even know what a deductible is uh, and what copay is and a network and HSA and FSA. So really cool edu educational videos. We have templated videos. Listen, you can build videos on our platform without an animator in seconds. You don't need to hire an animator. You don't need to create videos. You can, you can create plan specific, employer specific videos in minutes without the need for any expensive cost. Meanwhile, then we can display resources over these videos. You just talked about maybe copay or vesting in a 401k video. Well, let's show your vesting schedule in real time, linked to a resource inside your site. You're really putting the information right inside of uh, employees' faces. So this is the experience for them. And by the way, we do a lot of custom videos. But for you, we want to give you all of those features we talked about before in the communications journey from campaigns to texting. Everything that was on that list in the circle before, we're trying to bring those to every size organization and give you analytics to boot to help you do it and give you something that can help you drive results through campaigns. And it's a year round nurturing tool and give you analytics. Something for open enrollment, cut your communications time by two thirds. Do it once, save it, put it out there. Leverage us to do it because included in your cost is significant time for us to help you build these sites and give you fewer questions year round. A quick little chart here, we can show this to you through a demonstration on how we can cut your communications time by two thirds. And then plug and play. You don't need IT. You use all your existing resources. You're going to leverage our super simple video capabilities. We're going to do it for you. So you just turn it on um, for all intents and purposes. And many clients, we can have a site up for you in a couple of days with no wait, no nothing. And then finally here, let's just close out with what we've learned. So thank you very much for listening to me about Learn Your Benefits. So what we talked about though today was why resiliency should be a priority. Uh, you, we know there's significant fear, uncertainty and doubt. We all believe that we really need to help employees thrive with these benefits. We know the benefits are there to help employees be successful within their jobs. We know it doesn't necessarily boost our top line here uh, or our bottom line in our HR service center, our cost center, if you will, but it will positively impact the rest of the organization. Then we talked about our approach to driving resiliency, talking about what some of the cool benefits that are out there, some of the things that are approachable, some things that are expensive. And then maybe a little bit here in a second here, we can get into some Q and A right now. There's, there's really nothing in the chat. Um, so feel free to do that. Um, but I'm also gonna tell you in just a second how you can get in touch with us. Learn Your Benefits really does prioritize thought leadership. Um, check out our blog, blog.learnyourbenefits.com. Uh, you know, we're regularly, you know, putting out material about every two weeks. Uh, we have a team of three whose, whose role is just creating content. Uh, we have a great ebook. It's updated annually, and it's on the five steps to communicate your round or communicate more frequently. If you don't want to do the log, blog, you want to follow us on LinkedIn, be sure to check us out, LinkedIn slash company slash learn your benefits. All our past webinars are at here's slides and handouts. 
So info.learnyourbenefits.com slash slides and handouts. This is where we're going to be. Uh, these slides will be there soon. Uh, future webinars, subscribe to our emails. These or these webinars on Hey Summit elsewhere, other demo webinars we do are going to be in there. So subscribe. Uh, and if you want to learn more about us, just go ahead and schedule a demo. So with that, um, I don't see any questions here in the chat. Uh, I'll sit online here a little bit afterwards, but feel free to take off. And at this point, thank you very, very much for joining us here at this presentation. This recording will be available for you later. Uh, uh, more information about us at learnyourbenefits.com, our marketing site. Info, feel free to send an email at learnyourbenefits.com. I actually actively monitor that. If you're an existing client, you want to learn more, come to support at learnyourbenefits.com. And uh, feel free to stop by there, reach out to your dedicated customer success manager and more. So I really appreciate your time. It was fun to speak to you all. Again, this webinar is recorded. And check us out for more future webinars. So take care. Have a great rest of your day. Be safe. And uh, we'll see you again in another Learn Your Benefits webinar. Take care now.